How's everyone doing? Thanks for joining me on my small engine repair channel. Today's project is on this uh, certified brand uh, push mower and uh, the problem that uh, it's having is it won't start. So let's take a look at it and see if we can't figure it out. Um, it's self-propelled and uh, has a bagger. He said he just can't get it started. So uh, let's just do a uh, function test first and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so it didn't start. The next thing we're going to do is uh, try and spray some carb spray in the throat of the carburetor. Uh, this is actually uh, starting fluid or ether. I'm just going to uh, show you here. So there's the throat of the carburetor right there. And uh, it does look a little bit wet. The choke mechanism or choke flap is closed. That's the uh, position it should be in. So. Just gonna get me a little screwdriver here. So let's stick that in, open up the choke. Now the choke mechanism's up here. All right, let's see if it will even try and start. All right, so that actually was pretty easy. I, uh, when I just sprayed some in there, it fired up and then it was about to die. So I sprayed it one more time uh, as it was about to die and it kicked back on and uh, then kept running the, the whole time. All right guys, so uh, the engine wasn't running as smoothly as I'd like to and I'm gonna be going through this whole thing anyways because it's for a friend of mine, a neighbor. So I'm just going to show you guys how to go ahead and clean a carburetor on one of these. Um, I don't know if these are Rado branded, R-A-T-O, uh, or there's some sort of a Chinese knockoff brand. So just take the air filter cover off, the air filter, and it uh, looks like we got two 10 mil bolt, uh, nuts here. Just take the filter housing off. All right, let's get you a closer look up at the uh, carburetor. Don't like really working on these. The linkages are a pain in the, you know, what to work with. Uh, this linkage here for the choke, it, it runs off of a, uh, this lever here goes to an air vein underneath. So I'm gonna, the easiest way to take this off is to actually undo that air vein um, because the linkage is just a little bit difficult to take off otherwise all right so that's how the linkages look before i start taking this off the the linkage in the back here is pretty easy to get off i'll show you that here in a second all right so i'm going to take the top cover off here anyways so i believe this is uh seven these are seven millimeter So I'm going to take this back linkage off here. So you just open the throttle valve all the way and then you lift up, you pull the carb out and then you kind of lift up uh, on this linkage here and then you take that little spring out of that hole right there. So 
So when that comes out and the spring, sometimes you gotta use a little pair of needle nose pliers or something to get that out. Try not to bend that spring too much. Okay. So the other end of those linkages go onto this uh, um, governor arm. We're just gonna go ahead and take this starter recoil off. I think that's back to 10 millimeter. And then we're gonna do this So that starter recoil will come off. I'll move it that before I put it back on. Okay. So now you got are those seven or eight? They look like eight. Just and there's eight millimeters just to keep these uh, this gas tank on there. Those are nuts and bolts. I'll just put those back together so we don't lose them. Make sure I know go what goes with what. And then these little clips here come out. Now just be careful these little um, spacers they also have a tendency to just fall out. All right then the whole engine cover comes up here. So that air vein is here. The linkage the linkage for the air vein goes here. So if you just lift up that's a Z bend on that end. So that will come out just like that. Set that aside. All right, and I just got one more linkage here to the, uh, against to the uh, auto choke assembly for, here's a, like a thermostat controlled assembly right there. So I gotta somehow get that all off. Before I do that, I think I'm gonna pinch off this fuel line. Just use a set of needle nose pliers. Just gently pinch that off. And you get yourself a, and you could probably just pull off the uh, fuel line. Yeah, a little leakage there. There is one, looks like maybe a 10 mil bolt right there. That'll take that whole assembly off and then we'll be able to get the linkage off. attached and then rotate that off and then the carburetor is ready to come off so this is such a this was a pain in the butt to get off that's why I love my Briggs and Stratton's but uh, anyway so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take you over to the bench here and then I'll show you how to clean this up all right so uh, just to 10 millimeter bolt here on the bottom. That's uh, your bowl nut. Take that off. I'm curious to see the state of the fuel in this thing. Wow. Pleasantly surprised. Take a look at that. It's actually pretty darn nice. The guy said that the fuel was from last year, so I don't know if he was just feeding me a line as to why he didn't think it would 
would run and figured that, uh, you know, if he, if he said that the gas was a little old, then maybe that's why it wouldn't run. But uh, anyways, before we get diving in, I'm going to put this back. I'm going to use this little bit of fuel that came out of the bowl. I'm going to, with a paintbrush here, an old paintbrush, just going to clean up all the outside of this before I take it all apart because I don't want that all getting into the inside of the carburetor. Once I've cleaned the majority of the outside there, I'll just blow that off with an air gun and uh, we'll come back and take it apart. All right, so once again, just 10 mil bolt, bowl nut. Okay, here's your float pin. Here's your float with your needle valve, and you're going to want to check the needle valve to make sure that there's no deformation uh, from it sitting in the same position for a long period of time. Okay, that's the seat there. There's not much you can do with that guy. Your main jet is right down and in here. You're probably not going to be able to see that. It's a brass jet with a flat head. A slot cut into it for a flathead screwdriver. The only problem is you need a, a screwdriver that has a, uh, a straight shank, right? It can't have a flare, a flare out like a lot of screwdrivers have. So, and you want to pick the appropriate size and make sure you're pushing down pretty hard as you're turning so that you don't strip the head that uh, slot cut into the into the main jet. So it doesn't usually come all the way out, but comes out most of the way usually. And if it doesn't, you can just whack the this guy here and then behind it as well, there is an emulsion tube down in there. You can see that. So Sometimes if you, I'm just going to take this guy off. Sometimes if you whack it a few times, it will come out as well. Sometimes not. Sometimes you got to put a, a screwdriver down in here and the top of that emulsion tube sticks through the throat of the carburetor right there, that brass tube. And sometimes you can get at it with a screwdriver and that, you know, just kind of pop it down. And that might work work it out. If, if that doesn't work, the other thing I've found that works is I get myself a little Allen wrench. Where is that? Here it is. So just take a little Allen wrench and kind of stick it down in that thick one that's small enough that you it'll fit into that hole where the emulsion tube goes down. Sometimes you got to get at it from the other side. Nope. Popped it out. And here it is. So this emulsion tube, it's got all these little holes in it. And you want to make sure that all of those are clear. They all look pretty clear to me. I'm going to be spraying this whole thing down with some carb spray. Same thing with this guy. Take a look here through the main jet. 
you see that little tiny speck of light that should be much bigger so I believe that's the uh, issue that we're having with this thing <laughs> well that might have been a little bit of residual fuel you can see the hole looks pretty darn good now but I still do run like a piece of wire through all this stuff you gotta find an appropriate size wire try and clean all this out okay and uh, if your emulsion tube has any clogs in it then Again, grabbing a little piece of wire. This one's a little too big for those smaller holes, but right, it's going to go through if there's any clogged up. The other thing we got to do is uh, this idle jet. A lot of times, this is our problem. This idle jet we got to get out. So, this guy you want to screw. So to put this all back together, just the reverse, basically of how we took it apart. You can start here with the idle jet. Now, when you put it back together, it should be in this orientation. So the long way should be kind of in the direction of the, the airflow and fuel through the carburetor. Okay, and then you can start this by hand. And then you screw it in. How I do it is I screw it in until the meat of this is halfway across that idle jet. Because this screw, it sets the idle on this side. Right? It does set, what the, that little plastic screw will come through the other end. And then it will set the idle speed, but it also keeps this idle jet down. So... Now, we don't ever typically run these things at idle, per se, so getting this idle setting perfect is not 100% a necessity. It's more just to make sure that it's halfway across that idle jet, okay? Then put our motion tube in, and it goes like this, okay? Then our main jet goes in and you're going to want to screw that down until just until it's snug you don't want to over tighten this because again you don't want to strip the head off of that uh, uh off of that main jet because you'll never get it out again so just push it down as you're turning nice and snug okay next thing we can do is put our Float back in, float pin, so you got to line up the holes, there you go, like that. Now I test usually test these, uh, I do have a pressure tester I can test it with, or you can just blow into the uh, intake where the gas comes in, and you should not hear any noise, any airflow leakage. I hear nothing. If there is leakage, it'll sound like this. Hopefully you could pick that up. So this one's in good shape. The uh, bowl gasket has to go back on now. Just like so. Then you could put your bowl back on. And usually I put 
put it on with this orientation. So wherever the fuel comes in, the drain goes on the opposite side. And put your bowl nut back on and just gonna snug that up. Okay, just like so. Now she's ready to go back on the machine. All right, so I got some fresh oil topped up in there. I got some fuel in there. So far, I don't see any leaks. So let's see how we did. So she's running like a top. I don't see uh, any leaks at all out of the uh, oil dipstick there. And the uh, last thing I do is just kind of clean it up a little bit and uh, sharpen the blade and uh, it'll be ready to go. So uh, hopefully this will be informative to somebody. Uh, if you liked it, please uh, you know, smash the like button down below. And if you're not a subscriber, consider doing so. It really helps me out on the channel. Till our next project, take care.